Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian Kafke, and this is Lesson 39, Scala, Data Frames and Data Sets. Before I jump in, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you get direct access to me, periodic Q&As among the benefits. Let's jump in. I'm using a dark theme this time so that you'll be able to see me better because it's hard to green screen out my background on the light environments. And before I jump in, I want to talk about something that continually haunts me in talking about Databricks, which is many people out there are still under the false impression, probably because way back it was a true statement, that you need to know Scala if you want to do serious and performant programming on Databricks or Apache Spark. So let me go over that before I get into any of this other stuff. First, Scala does not perform significantly better than Python on Spark. It's really important to get that through your mind because I still get people who insist that they need to do Scala to get good performance. Now I can go way back into the, the Wayback Machine and talk about RDDs and things like that that may have had a pretty good justification for using Scala over PySpark, but that has really gone away over time. We generally don't use RDDs anymore and we use something called data frames and data sets, which I'm going to talk about. So the point I really need to focus here is you don't need to learn Scala, okay? If you're thinking, oh my God, I gotta go back and learn Scala, this is gonna be hard, you don't. I once actually posted, not that long ago on LinkedIn and said this very thing, you don't need to learn Scala on Spark. PySpark performs pretty much equally with Scala when it comes to you know doing the typical data science and data engineering workload. And I had someone from Databricks post back and saying, you're absolutely right. PySpark is the way to go. It's great or whatever. You don't need to learn this. Not that you shouldn't. If you use Scala, you like it, you want to use it, it's great. But you don't need to for good performance anymore. So please, if you're sitting there thinking, I want to become a data engineer and I want to use Databricks and all this, and you keep putting in your mind you need to use Scala, please stop it. I won't say it's equal for a couple of reasons. One is different languages and libraries could have slight differences. So I can't say that in some cases, Scala won't perform better. Also, Scala as a language is closer to what would be called a compiled language, right? It uses the Java virtual machine. And so it's very similar to Java and it has static data typing. So it supports specific data typing as opposed to Python's dynamic data typing, which can, depending on what you're doing, improve performance. So you may get some, but I would say marginal benefits of using Scala in some workloads, but generally speaking, it's going to be about equal. So when should I consider using Scala, Brian? Well, I would say use Scala if you need what the language offers. In other words, you want Scala because Scala has, as I mentioned, static data typing, the Java virtual machine. And if you don't intend to use the notebooks to develop your code, but you're going to use some integrated development environment that can leverage sort of IntelliSense and all kinds of cool things and look at data typing, then you may want to use it. If you're building a large project with lots of functions and classes, and you want to make sure that you can pass in type checked parameters, which Python doesn't do, then this is a really good reason to potentially use Scala. So what do I mean by strongly typed? I don't want to get into too much details, but basically in a language like Scala, you can pass a variable into a function as a parameter and you can say this must be an int this must be a decimal and it will actually type check that and if somebody passes a string in it's going to reject it it will actually create an error at compile time as well as runtime it'll stop that in python you can do a sort of suggested typing but python doesn't enforce it even if you say this should only be an int you could still pass a string in python's not going to stop it so that's the difference right there I would suggest if you're trying to get up to speed and be a good data engineer and know what you're doing and be highly marketable as a professional, then focus on Python. So let's start with this block of code here. What I'm going to show you, this is Scala. One of the differences, you can see here, this is a Scala notebook. You can get the data I will be using in this notebook by going to the link that I will leave in the description, which will bring you to what I believe is video lesson nine, which will tell you how to upload the data and create tables from it in Databricks. And once you have done that, you'll be able to follow and use the code I have here. So what we're gonna do here is uh, define that we wanna to point to the database AW project because I wanna use some SQL code. 
in Scala, the way that I can execute SQL code, any SQL code I want, is just to call SQL and then in parentheses, pass my code in. And it looks very similar to what you do in Python because you have essentially a doc string, right? Triple quotes on each end so that I can incorporate, you know, single quotes and things within it and it's multiple lines. One thing that really separates this syntactically from something like Python is you have a val here being received. In Python, you don't need to put any kind of object type as to what you'll be receiving, hence the object type here. And uh, the data frame is coming back to the SQL statement. So to summarize what we're doing here, we're passing in a SQL statement and it's doing quite a bit. It's selecting columns, joining tables and filtering. And it will run that query and return the results to this object, SSDF sales region. My naming prefix SSDF means it's a Scala Spark data frame. And then the underscore separates it from like, what is it in there? And this is sales region data. So let's run this code. And I had run it before. If you saw a little bit of stuff in the underneath there, you'll see that. And you can see it gives the types here. And I want to call your attention to the fact that you can see here, it says that this is a Spark SQL data frame. And just a quick reference there, I don't focus a lot on this, but the SQL and the data frame object classes and everything are all kind of commingled. They're all really part of the SQL support in Databricks. And if I want to display that data frame, I can take the data frame object and I can use the display function. One thing we can also do is do the print schema method. So I can take this data frame and use the print schema method to, to kind of get a look at the column and data types if I need to go back to that. If I want to just see a couple of rows, not getting any kind of visually pleasing output, I can say show to. And if I want to use the SQL like functions, which really are using SQL under the covers, I can use the select method and pass through the columns I want like this, and then just do a show at the end. And I'll get a display like this, which is pretty good. I can also persist the data frame. I'm going to show you two different ways I can do this. If I know the data frame does not exist, I can simply take the data frame name, say write, Format, in this case, we're using Parquet, and then write out the file, which is going to be sales region dark Parquet. Now I'm getting an error on that because I did this earlier, but if it if I hadn't created this already, it would just put it out there. To override that and say, yeah, I know it's there, I'm gonna say dot mode overwrite here, save mode overwrite, and that will replace the data frame that's already there. We can prove that by using the magic percent fs and then ls to list files, and you can see it here in the sales region. So let's look at this a little bit further. Here I'm going to create a new value, val, and this is going to be a data frame coming back. And I'm going to take the data frame SSDF sales region and this time just select two columns I want, the sales amount and the sales territory region column. And now that returned, as we can see, a Spark data frame. What I want to do though is create a local data frame, not something you generally want to do, but maybe you need to bring some data locally. The point here is to take what I did before, right? Sales region select, pull some columns back, but this time add the collect method at the end. That's going to force Spark. It's going to tell Spark, collect all the data frame data from all the nodes and return it back to LSDF, local Scala data frame. And there it is. You can kind of see it didn't display very pretty because it's just collecting all the data as it is. But we can wrap up a local data frame with the display so it's a little bit easier to look at and to manipulate. Now what I want to do here is to show you yet another way we can use a SQL language within Scala to kind of do things for us. Here I'm going to take the data frame that we created and I'm going to use the select expression which allows me to incorporate more direct SQL like syntax into my query and here I'm going to cast the order date as a string and give it a new name or due date as a string this time. Uh, date 2, sales amount and then here sales territory, and then I'm going to collect that back. So just a little bit of more SQL-like syntax. These are things we can do also in Python, but I just wanted to show you you can do them in Scala. I can display that, again, local data back. Kind of a little more, again, on this sort of leveraging the SQL functionality we have, because that's very performant and it has a lot of functionality for us. We can go in here, and what I want to do is I'm just going to bring in the Spark SQL functions. We're going to use the SQL library function and pass in select asterisk, uh, select asterisk from dim customer to return customer info. And what I wanna do here is show you yet more of this kind of syntax. So I'm just gonna say, okay, take my sales data frame and I wanna filter it where sales amount is greater than 300. Then I want you to join 
the SSDF customer info to the SSDF sales region, where SSDF customer info is equal to the customer key. And now I can do a grouping by the house owner flag, SS customer info gender. And I can also do an aggregation, the average sales amount here. So let's take a look at this again. I'm doing a lot of very SQL-like functionality by using methods instead of just passing direct SQL. And what's interesting is I'm able to use SQL-like functions directly on data frame. This is kind of handy. I can say, you know, again, my sales region, but I'm gonna do a filter. I can do a join to another table, matching up on the keys that should be matched. You can see here in the syntax. Bear in mind this equal equal functionality, triple equal statement. Uh, it's a strange expression. So again, you need to know your Scala syntax, make sure you, you don't veer away from that and you get this output. One thing Scala offers that's different from other languages on Spark is that you can not only create our good old data frames, which are supported by R and Python, but you can also create something called a data set, which is only supported by Scala. What's the difference between the two? They sound a lot better than they are actually because data sets to me sound like they would perform much better than data frames because data sets are strongly typed. Well, let me show you what I mean. We're going to create a class, which is the sales schema, which is just what it sounds like. We're going to describe a row of data coming back. And we're gonna say the sales amount coming back is a double data type, right? Double, decimal, numeric, and the sales territory key is a string. So we want it to know not dynamically let anything go in. We're telling it what must go in this data. And here we're going to define that as an encoder. We're going to say org Apache Spark. Notice we're bringing all this in encoders. We're going to pass that sales schema in. How do we use that, Brian? Well, once we have this object encoder created, we're going to use it to translate what we have in our data frame, SSDF underscore sales in territory or terror into SS. DS, no, it's not DF, DS, data set. And let's take a look at what we get when we do that. Now, it's not totally clear because a lot of times, you know, Databricks is pretty good about showing you, oh, I see this is really an int. It has, it really identifies what's in the columns anyway. But the difference here is that when we see this double and the string, it's enforced. It must be this. And the engine will always rely on the idea that what is in that column is a double and it's a string and whatever else we define to be part of that schema. And so we have strongly typed data, a strongly typed data set. Now, again, if I really needed to say, pass it around and do, do work on it where that strong data typing is essential to what I'm doing, then there may be some reason to use Scala and use data sets to do things. Strangely, to me, it seems a little strange, but actually the way Databricks is defined things, the way Spark works, it doesn't really perform better using data sets. In fact, from what I've seen, it may perform slightly worse. Go figure. Now, an interesting thing when you talk about data sets is that a data frame is really a data set row. So if we take SSDF, we're going back to our original data frame, and I say, I want to convert SSDF sales region. I want to just take that and convert it into a data set. I can do it by basically casting a data set row here and pulling this out. And if I do that, then I will have a data set. So let's take a look at this. Look here, you see that it's a data set. So it has that data set, but it identifies it as a row. And then if I, again, use this to a display, I can display the data in there. And now I'm getting all kinds of stuff. A nice feature of doing it this way is I don't have to go out and break out all the data types, but it, it knows what all the different data types are, okay? Databricks display function will work on Scala data frames, Scala data sets, and local data frames, which is kind of handy. What if we wanted to load a file into a, a data set versus a data frame? First, we need to bring in our class, the schema that's going to hold the data. So here we have it here. And we're telling it what to define these as. But now we can say val ssds sales territory 2, ter2. We're going to use SQL or SQL context, read parquet, pass in the path to the file. Then I'm just selecting the columns because actually in that file, there's more there may be more than I want so I'm just selecting what I want and I can say as schema as we saw before and then I'll just show a couple of rows and that that's what you get finally before I exit this riveting video I want to point out that you can use a couple of metadata there may be more just giving you a smattering of some of the things 
but I can say, here's a data set. Tell me what columns are in that. And you'll get that. You can use print schema just as you can with data frames. So you get a, a breakdown of what's in there. And we can use explain. What the explain does is it goes back and says, when I go to build this data set, what are all the steps that I need to do? And you can see the logical and physical plans in here, the logical plan being shown, the physical plan. So it's giving you that analysis. So those DBAs out there, this is the explain plan that they always love to play around with in those worlds. So wrapping up, we talked about Scala's misconception. And I hope you remember, you don't need to learn Scala. So if you talk to somebody, and ironically, people who've worked with Spark sometimes for years, I think they tend to be the ones that are caught, they're caught up in the way Spark used to be five, six years ago. And like, oh, no, you need to use Scala. And maybe they just went through a lot of suffering, so they don't want to give it up. But you can tell them. I don't care if you're new or not. Say, nope, that's not true. You do not need to know Scala to be a very good data engineer and data scientist on Databricks. You don't need it. You can use PySpark just fine. And you can use R for that matter as well. We've talked about data frames and data sets. When we talked about data frames, I showed you different examples of how to create data frames and manipulate them. And generally, I focused on using SQL because it was easy to get data in there. But you could read it from files or do anything you want and create data frames just like we did in Python. Data sets are rather interesting. Data sets make use of the fact that Scala is built on Java, which is a strongly typed language, using strict typing, as they say. And the strict typing means that you can tell it that instead of a data frame, which is really dynamically typed, a data set is strongly typed, meaning it says this is an int, and it darn well better be an int. And this column is a decimal. So it's enforcing the types, which is really something that's inherent in the language and maybe a reason to use it in certain cases. That's it for this time. I hope you like this. Please like, share, subscribe, leave your questions in the comments. And other than that, look forward to talking to you next time. And remember, I'm Paul Employer. We're all in this together. Thank you.